Jackie Cash and Lori Kilmartin. I'm in Columbus. Where are you? I'm in, I'm in Los Angeles, um, okay, but I will yeah. be in New York City starting on uh, Friday night. And I have like, I don't know, six or seven spots each night, Friday, Saturday. Nice. And then Sunday, I'm at the Broadway. And then Monday, I'm doing Butter Boy and then the Stand Frantic. And then Tuesday, if all goes well, I'm doing a spot on Sherry Shepard's show, uh, oh, her daytime show that replaced uh, Wendy Williams' show. So, yeah. Good on you. We did uh, yeah. at midnight. There's a credit. We got to talk about it. Yeah, there you go. Now's the time. Let's have a podcast yeah. to talk about it. I love it. Okay. Well, start, Jackie. <laughs> well, um, it was fun. It was. It was. It was. You know, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. It was. It was. It's being run uh by people who just want everyone to have a good time there doesn't seem to be the frenetic energy that can sometimes happen with a show that is just dumb fun that's supposed to be dumb fun it doesn't get sometimes they produce the fuck out of it and the thing that's dumb fun gets over over they overthink it and this one and also yeah yeah it can get real things can get clubby i remember like with tough crowd it was so new york comics based that when an la comic would come in it was like an invader was here right and <laughs> a little click and F- yeah. F- yeah if a- after midnight they're like they do everything for you you literally don't have to do a thing except show up right to. yeah if you want to, if you want to write jokes or rewrite stuff or whatever you can Mm -hmm. Um, but they also, they have great writers and they give you a huge selection of stuff to choose from if you don't have anything. And so you basically can just show up if you don't want to do anything. It's great. Yeah. And it's the amazing thing is that the writing that you get to do, the performing that you get to do is all that in between stuff. So, and they Mm -hmm. encourage that because that's where they, that's where they find some editing gold. My, I was. My uh, my writer was Skylar Higley, who um, I worked Wait, with. I mean, he did our um, he just our keeps Jackie popping and Lori up. show. Yeah, I love Sky. Well, he lives here now, and uh, he did. Uh, he was a Conan writer, and he worked for the Onion after Conan uh, went down, and now he's on After Midnight. He's really he's really funny, and he has really good taste. So, like, I would run stuff by him that I had, and he'd be he'd be like, "That's good." And I'd be like, okay. Right. And they'd be like, well, and I'd be like, all right, let's work on that one then. The young um, woman that I was working yeah. with was so good and really nice. And I was, um, I've been so uh, tired and weirdly, I mean, it's probably, let's just say I should probably take Lipitor. But whatever it is, is uh, I <laughs> I, for that, some reason I'm having that. a hard time concentrating. <laughs> I don't feel well. Gotcha. But uh, the, uh, right. but so, it was, um, yeah, she was so funny and the selections were so great and it was sort of in real time, you know, where they were like, okay, so Lori took that or it took that, uh, do you want any of I these? Know. And I'm like, yeah, 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 sure. I'll, and then um, other things that- were written, made them personal. It was super, super fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I will, if I go back on the show, if I'm invited back, I will immediately go for the hashtags first and grab the best hashtags. Because usually, <laughs> like, our our hashtag was um, edible Broadway. So it was, like, oh, yeah. food Broadway puns. And I was, like, if I had just a half hour to, like, look at Broadway show names, I would have, you know, I would have I would have had been, fun. But you, I, just, you I didn't have own. the time, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I just grabbed, I grabbed the... <laughs> What were to be the top ones <laughs> and um, that were left? <laughs> well, I we love, have, I love the you... strategy. I love the let's go to oh, hashtag yeah. wars first. You're sitting in the makeup chair, uh, yes. <laughs> and they're like, let's FYI, just scroll. Go to hashtag scroll. wars first. Yeah, it, that's it. It'll be like the third or fourth thing on your list of things, and you'll probably go in chronological order. I'm telling you, get there first, grab the good ones because those are <laughs> those are so quick, and um, there's so many that. Uh, uh, it's it'll be it's it, it's a task to write them, and so when right. someone else has done the work for you, you know, take advantage of that. Yeah, it's super. Yeah, it was. Um, and then I brought all of the clothes in the world because um, I now 
have style ethic at style ethic <laughs> and, uh, on Instagram. It's been helping me pick stuff. Like my don't tell came oh, out. Cool. I don't think I would have done that. Uh, uh, the don't tell came out the same day. Um, we that's did a it. Lot. We, well, that's that was a lot, control, but I though. no, no. Uh, I asked for it. <laughs> I thought that they mm. would bounce off each other quite well. Um, I think the don't tell should have came out the next day, just because yeah. it would have been additional content, right? And right, as right, the, right. Uh, as as the words are used, but um, because the the after midnight clips were were great yeah but then there was also and numerous and several and the way if people haven't got a chance to see it if you go to the after midnight youtube channel essentially they just break it up into three 10 minute chunks they don't have the whole show but it's three 10 minute chunks which in a in an hour-long show that's plenty you've seen the best three 10 minute chunks yeah yeah and um um yeah, but Taylor was so nice and just like, you know, she, at, at one point, uh, Andy came to the show with his buddy Kevin and mm-hmm. um, Kevin has been a fan of Taylor's. Like Kevin is, here's here's what's going on stand-up comedy wise in my house. Uh, there's a lot of stand-up <laughs> comedy fans going on. First of all, I right. forgot that Kevin had been a stand-up comedy fan before he met Andy, right? Before, before I met oh. him. Right. They had a friend who actually, they went to college with Chris Hardwick, right? So they all went to UCLA together. There was their buddy, Randy did stand up, and he did stand up with Chris. And uh, what's his last name? Randy's last name. Do you remember? Was it Randy Hauser? Was it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It might've been. Uh, could have been really uh, he doesn't do I knew, I knew anymore. Him from San Francisco. No, he was like the it boy comic of San Francisco for a little while. Randy I don't Hauser think it's was. him. I don't think it's him. Okay. Uh, All right. I, I wish I could remember his last name because I've gone apple picking with him in Boston, outside of Boston. So, cause he lives outside of Boston. He's married. Got a kid. Oh, it's not Randy Hauser. Two. No, no, okay. I don't think it's him. Uh, cause he doesn't, uh, he went into, he went into all of Andy's friends from college. Uh, or mm-hmm. just went into fantastical nerd jobs, like amazing. Like his buddy Lee works at Jet Propulsion Labs and does, you know, his buddy John was the IT guy for the fucking Navy. Like one of like six guys who did all the IT, whatever. But, um, right. So they, but so Kevin, huge fan of Taylor's from the beginning, like, and his, and so. When they came up, because we were all going to dinner, um, I asked you if you wanted to go. You had you went home to the to your young man to hang out with your son. And um, but Shh, don't tell her. Just so people n- don't think that I didn't invite you, I invited you. Uh, so um, well, if they think that, it's because I told them that on my other secret podcast <laughs> called "Complaining About Jackie Cation." <laughs> uh, I will say. <laughs> that okay so the story is oh god everything i am quite a project this morning as a matter of fact i'm just trying to get a cup of coffee from somebody okay the story continues here it is um i entered uh so taylor came up and was just talking about how much how she enjoyed the show and uh, how it was really fun and kevin and andy had just walked away from me and i said oh my god i have to introduce you to my friend kevin he's a huge fan and she was like oh yeah oh yes yes like like we do like you do right and so i found kevin and then uh kevin he yeah everyone no one was weird it was perfectly nice uh i think it was uh and she was super polite and he was he didn't gush too hard but here's the other thing happening stand-up comedy wise in my in my home my mother-in-law yeah is watching stand-up comedy specials for (laughs) five or six hours a day oh dear just for you, Jackie. <laughs> after just dry bar after dry bar after Netflix after Netflix after dry oh, no. bar to the point right. where as I walk through and Andy's trying to work on his computer, which is in the living room, which is where her chair is, which is where the giant TV is. Right. There's a small TV. Right, right. Uh, oh so my god. At one point they're watching a comic. And uh yeah. and this yeah. is as absolutely mm. cannot be possibly be true. Uh, but Wait. the two of them were discussing, uh, how Wait. some jokes that this, this person was doing. Now it is, 
Uh, okay. Wait, not a chance. It. It's under huh. everyone. Okay. Okay. So, so wait, the, wait the, who was, who was discussing? Chris and Andy were discussing okay. about how some of this person's premises were beneath them. Huh? So as I was oh, walking that's a very, through, that's a very specialized conversation <laughs> to have. <laughs> Right. Especially for as, an 82 year old woman from Visalia, California, <laughs> but good for her. <laughs> uh, right. As, as I walked through, they were talking about it and I said, why don't you two write a fucking joke? And then I kept moving. <laughs> and uh, I was like, <laughs> you don't get, you don't get to. Yeah, I was livid. <laughs> no, I wasn't livid. But I mean, I was just like, this has turned into something very weird. And so, and they oh were, and God. she was watching so many people. I was like, I know Tommy Ryman has a dry bar. I know Bent Washburn has a, a dry bar. And then, and then she was watching one of the, one of the, um, the big dudes, right? One of the fancy, I was like, would you please watch Dad Daniels, Dad, Chad Daniels' first uh, not a, I don't think it's his first special. I think it's actually his second special, but um, that he yeah. put out himself on YouTube. And so I put that on and she loved it. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Why don't you ask me? Like she's watched all of the gay ladies because she's a gay lady. She's seen Tig right. and Fortune and um, <clears throat> and then the more. What? Did she watch Wanda at all? Oh, she's watched Wanda and Ellen several times. Yeah. And then yeah. she, <clears throat> and then she's watched, but yeah, I, it was, uh, <laughs> feel free to email me suggestions, uh, Jackie at JackieCation.com because, uh, I don't want to walk through and watch her just watching s just some dude I've never heard of talk about the right. WNBA. I don't want to No, I don't want <laughs> absolutely not. Those jokes are, I love your, tw I mean, I feel the same way though. It's like good. I guess you got laughs in that one year that premise was valid that no one watched right. the WNBA, but that shit's forever now, motherfuckers. And now, uh, it's <laughs> that's not going to age well, my brother. Ball. Yeah. Uh, five more years and you're going to look, uh, embarrassingly unprecient. Right. And right. Well, and that's, th that is actually, that's hilarious because, Whenever I post like an old, old joke and someone's like, oh my yeah. God, that came, that came true. That came true. I was like, I genuinely feel like Nostradamus. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, that's right, motherfuckers. I know. And, uh, I mean, granted I'm shooting, uh, twice a day. We got to shoot up the dog now for, uh, for, for, for insulin, for diabetes. Oh, uh, and I used to do mm. the twice a day cat joke and, uh turns out but dog insulin did you know this dog <laughs> insulin so much cheaper than people insulin made of the same stuff go to walmart <laughs> really 47 dollars a month a okay month. oh um, and then the phone rang in my room hang on a second is that talk amongst that yourselves sounds like an, an old school uh rotary phone uh jackie we'll we'll pause i mean I no, no, my wait, no, they went away, podcast, they went away. But... Well, so did okay. I. So here's here's the rest of the fact that I'm a freaking mess. So I fly yeah. yesterday, I leave at 6 a.m. So I get to LAX right. at 4.30. And um, Delta Comfort usually works out. Not this one. I'm next to the jump seat with the with the flight attendant. So, Ooh. and there's a, and there's a two-year-old right behind me who kicks right. my and is screaming, which I don't hear because I have headphones, but is kicking my seat and actually that I'm against and then kick my elbow. And I thought no. about turning around and saying something, but here's the thing. There's nothing she can do about it. She, I that's mean, not she, true. That's not true. I had, I used to fly with a two-year-old. Okay. You can, you can't control the screaming. And they, sh and as I wrote in shitty mom, they should scream because they're inheriting a world that's on fire. <laughs> but um that's a great joke you can't maybe i could put that in my act right yes please i mean i yes, wrote please. it yeah you did um so uh but you can't control the kicking it's a pain in the ass but you have to put your arm on their legs and you have to hold it there and that's that you have to put some body part on their legs and stop them from kicking it's uncomfortable and it sucks and you might be doing that for an hour until they stop right. but you can't let them kick flight. the seat
Right. Well, and I was just like, well, you have the right to ask for that and say, I, I am well acquainted with a mother who threw her body across her son's <laughs> legs to not kick somebody in the back. Right. I was just like, uh, it's just, yeah, I just, I was just kind of, I would occasionally, I, I never, I didn't do anything. I was just like, whatever. But anyway, so I couldn't sleep on the flight. And then, mm-hmm. uh, and then I get here and then I get to the hotel and it's everyone's I'm polite. They're polite. I'm polite. They're polite. They're more polite. And then we're just standing there and I'm all checked in and everything. But I, I finally, I'm just like, okay, I've hit a wall. You guys, I just need the key. Can I please have the key? <laughs> and, and they're Wait, like, we're, it we're was taking there. them a while to get you the key. Yeah. And, and the tour manager for Brian Regan had already checked me in. Oh, Oh, at the tour manager. Okay. I thought it was the hotel. Okay, no, it gotcha. was the hotel because the because the because Bri- because David had already checked me in. I should have okay. just walked up, shown my ID, and gone to my room. But there, exactly. for some reason, there was a there was a lot of inter- interaction. So I get up to the room. I find out that I have left my chart one of my charger bricks and my AirPod holder and charger either in the in the cab. I've left it in the cab, or I've dropped it on the street. Oh. It's gone. So that phone call might have been Amazon delivering a new AirPod charger to the front desk for me. Okay. Because I see. Uh, yeah, cuz I my life uh for some reason I it's essentially I'm clumsily going through life uh these two days <laughs> and I don't I don't well, like you're it. you're actually losing things whereas I think I've lost them and then find them. Oh, but I gotta, I, I spend more wallet. energy I you did got a get a free wallet. wallet from after midnight and it has a, an air tag on it as well. Uh, so that was really sweet. Jackie, I, um, I went major clothes shopping on Tuesday cause we were taping on Wednesday and it, it just drains the hell out, hell out of me. I hate it. I ended <laughs> so up getting, love it. I bought a couple pink jackets from that's the only color that's out there is pink for women right now. <laughs> it's they're still doing Barbie pink. I'm like, yeah. is there anything else? Please. There wasn't, um, and, uh, so, uh, I had to return a couple super stuff, cute. some stuff yesterday. Thank you. So did you, you, you were, you, I saw you holding up gold lame, but you didn't wear it, right? No, gold lame could not. That happen. was incredible. Well, here's what happened with Kat. Uh, Kat Eves is, uh, the stylist that Carmen Morales and Jenny Zagrino and everybody suggested I go <laughs> and she's great. Mm-hmm. And she came up mm-hmm. with that outfit that I wore in my don't tell outfit with that long coat. But that long coat is uh, is a fashion item and was super expensive, so I couldn't buy it. Uh, so I got right. the gold sparkle shirt, which had a lot of sternum in my in my don't tell. You guys want to see some cleavage? Why don't you go look at that don't tell on the on the don't tell YouTube <laughs> channel? Uh, if you want to see a lot of sternum and some side boob from the middle, that's what I call cleavage. Yes. side boob from the middle, and then <laughs> uh, the. Uh, um, and then these green pleather pants, which are awesome. And then the boots that I wore for don't tell, but I, I, I couldn't face wearing them, uh, for after midnight. Cause I wanted to kind of mix it up. And then I bought, so cat couldn't be, she couldn't bring me a pile of clothes to buy because she was ill. She got sick and she said, I can. And then I went to Vegas, uh, last weekend and she hooked me yeah. up with a woman in Vegas who, I bought from her a gold lame pants and shirt outfit that I wow, that Jackie. I will, pants and shirt ah! that match pants and shirt. And then, Wait, so, so, so neck to t- neck to ankle, you could be a shiny gold being. Is that yes, what I'm hearing? Yes. Yes. Wow. I, th- it could be a disco moment. Uh, it felt very Vegas. I don't know why I bought it. Ooh. I think I bought it for the same reason I bought this skin thing as I walked by and they talked me in uh, because <laughs> no, nobody gets suckered more than a sucker. <laughs> so as my dad's Jackie, like, nobody buys I... more nonsense. Yeah. Oh, we are doing another Jackie and Lori presents at, at Flappers in Burbank on April 22nd. Correct. Are we? Are we? Okay, good. I think April so. 22nd. Amanda oh, Cohen's well, let's too. let's triple check that. April 22nd. Um, and yeah. Jackie, what I would recommend is that you wear your gold lame outfit <laughs> on that date. Let's tr- let's double check before we commit to anything. Right. 
And let but me that's tell what you I would, that that's what I request. Cat Eves, I sent her a picture of it, and she said, "What did you buy?" And so she's the she's the stylist. So even she's she doesn't encourage. She was not... Yeah, and <laughs> but I also bought in Vegas uh, a, a I think it's I don't think it's really leather, but um, fr- a friend a black fringe cowboy jacket, which is I what I did you wear. Wore that on the show, yeah, 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 and I then. Liked it. Yeah, and then I um and then I wore it's um, suede, isn't it? It Wasn't might have been suede? suede. Yeah, it felt like suede. Okay. I don't know if it was real, but then um my uh my cool uh high tops with which are embroidered. I wore those, which yeah. by the way were like they're the converse. They look like converse high tops, except for that they aren't because mm-hmm. they're hand embroidered, and um they don't have any support. So in between. <laughs> In between shoots. Oh, that's right. You were pair. such a diva. Yeah. <laughs> I felt yeah. unbelievable. So I was just, all I did was, I mean, they were just touching up makeup and stuff like that. So I went and sat on the edge of the, <laughs> the stage, like, a, like a comic, yeah. like a regular person. Yeah. And it turns mm-hmm. out the staff at After Midnight was like, you're not an animal. We have chairs, Jackie. So they brought me a chair every <laughs> time we would stop filming. And I felt very much like a burden that's when i'm like so. oh it's nice to be talent because they rush over to you they touch you up someone gives you a water and then they t- when you're done with it they take it <laughs> even though there was a water anywhere. holder you, just, you put it in a hand it's yeah. i'm like i could see how people become monsters after <laughs> you know years of treatment like this like there was a video of j-lo chewing gum and then giving it to her assistant Right. And uh, yeah, that happens all the time, you know. Uh, right. And and right. how could how can you be normal when you are allowed by your job and your union to put chewed gum in the hand <laughs> of another person? <laughs> it's not right. Right. There is. There's no justice, which means, of course, there's no peace. So um, <laughs> I uh, yeah. Weirdly enough. All, all the jokes that were listed on the things, we all kind of picked jokes that went to our personality. Oh, yeah? I yeah. thought so. Like, Maria <laughs> did pick that fart joke. She loves a silly fart joke with the power of the sun. Sure. And, oh, yeah. um, and you uh, picked some very dark stuff. And then I went a little political. <laughs> so, what <laughs> Um, listen, my because favorite, that's my, I, that's I my did, theme, by the way, a little political. Go ahead. Yes. I did do hand jobs uh, with my brother. With, I don't have a brother, by the way, which is why I felt safe in saying that one. Um, Bar- Barcelona right. joke was mine. Well, okay. After I wrote that one, I'm like, I'm done writing for the day. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll nice take hair what they flip. give me. Nice hair flip. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, Taylor is. I did super the Armenian Turk thing. Yeah. Oh, did they keep that in when I made fun of you and the Turks and all that? Yeah, and then they kept in also the dead dad thing. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, right. Yeah. Right, because you said Armenians. Yeah, so it's always with on. the Turks with you, and then yeah. you said something about the dad, <laughs> and I said it's always with your dead dad with you. So there you go. <laughs> um. Yeah, it was it was really cool. Well done. Real easy. You know, the the worry about it was worse than actually doing it, doing it. I think the worry about the uh, co- what I would wear was much more stressful than actually doing any part of the show. It was a lot of fun, you know. Right. right. And with you guys. <laughs> it was fun with you guys because I know you guys. I know you're, right. you know, we, 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 oh, what, when I did Midnight, um, I was on with, I forget who, and Doug Benson. And Doug Benson is the uncontested king of Midnight. And... It, it, I felt like, it, you I know, it was fun I was going to get crushed and it, yeah. I did get crushed, but this one didn't feel like anyone was going to get crushed. It was just, we're all going to get our jokes out and hopefully people that are in the studio audience and at home are laughing. That's the whole point is we're all supposed to be, you know, getting laughs. All right. not, I would like know, to tell you, winning. by the way, that I know when your birthday is, I was just lighting you up and, ah! uh, <laughs> But I, how many times did I have to tell you when my birthday was? 
Oh, at least twice. At least I don't know how Thank long we've been doing this. Six years, but because the thing is, yeah. is, is so they asked how, when our birthdays were, and Maria and I don't know if they kept this, but Maria was like, Jackie has always told me she doesn't care, and I was like, Yeah, we never celebrated it as children. One year we all got to celebrate our birthday, and then Nancy realized that that my dad didn't care, and she was like, Oh, then I don't have to. And so uh, <laughs> we all got one year of good birthdays, and then she was like, We're good, and then. So I, I, I believe Maria's is in September. I know yours is the 16th only because it's four days before mine. And, um, and then, but I did love that Maria was like, can I, that she wanted to lose. Yeah. And then you were like, well, oh, I yeah, don't I like love this. that too. Yeah. I don't like <laughs> then, winning that way. <laughs> that was fun. It was, it, it, I, I love yeah. I love her commitment to losing a game we're supposed to want to win. And did Bruce was like, uh, Bruce said, Maria wants to look old. She's trying to look older. I'm like, cause I was freaking out. I'm like, what's, what's, you know, uh, how do we look, you know? I don't know. Yeah. I just I like her, Bruce her. I would absolutely, uh, <laughs> never ask for Bruce's opinion. Uh, Cause he'll give it to me anyway, but, uh, the, it's not that right. I'm not going to get it, but, um, yeah, I'm not gonna, but I, I, I guess what I'm saying is I love Maria's anti-hero stance on every fucking thing <laughs> that we are supposed to want. And she always makes me go, yeah, why am I trying to want that? Like, who cares? <laughs> you know, right. she has rejected things earlier than, uh, than the rest of us. And, and in doing so, made a path uh, for the rest of us should we want to follow. And I appreciate that a lot. Right, right. And, and uh, however, yes. I, I did buy, you know, like $200 worth of anti-aging products after I saw myself on TV. Hilarious. Least. So in Vegas, yeah. I got sucked into this um, skincare place. I was just looking for a breakfast restaurant. And I asked them. Right. And that's what she, they were like, well, just come on in. We're just, it'll take a couple of seconds. I forget that that is sales talk for, I'm going to need 40 minutes <laughs> of your time. And, right, um, right, right. and I literally, they, and then it was, and in the end they were like, okay, so you'll buy this, this $400 and then you'll get this free thing for, and I was like, no, I'm not, I'm never going to use that stuff. I'm literally, if I were to give you $400, I might as well. <laughs> give you four hundred dollars, tell you to keep it, and tell you to sell it to someone else for two hundred dollars, and then the guy goes, "All right, I'll give it to you for two hundred dollars." <laughs> what? Oh my god! <laughs> and then I felt bad, so I gave him two hundred dollars. No, Jackie. Yeah, guy. and now it's sitting in my bag, and I'm supposed to do it once a week. One thing is some sort of weird collagen thing that freezes my face for a second. And the other okay. one is a scrub that's supposed to scrub away my, the aging process. And I'm supposed to use each of these once a day, uh, once a week. But what I've done is I've tried to use a, a handful mm. of each of them uh, every, every time I remember. So that then I won't have to carry them around anymore. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, first of all, I want to hear that guy's podcast called Dumb Sales of the Week. So he can talk about how he... He still got two hundred dollars from a lady committed to not buying anything. Oh my um, god, that is that's the definition of the damn sales. That's the definition of the damn thing. Oh anyway, is it April twenty second? By the way, I know that you were checking. Uh, no, I was listening to you. I'm sorry, Jackie. I was listening. I was paying attention. Oh, I didn't. You check. said we should double check that. Were you just making? Yeah, yeah. You were just making yeah, we a should note? after after our podcast, unless you want to take a break right now, and we could double check it. Shall we do Let's that? Take a break, and then we. Okay, hold on. Kelly McInerney. Did you find it? It used to be at Holly yeah. Weirdo, but now she has changed it. Yeah, all it I to have is that I'm taking my mother oh, yeah. DMV. One of my favorite yes. comedians in Los Angeles. No, I'll, I will forward it to you. Okay. We are doing one on the 22nd. Okay. And uh, I'm not wearing my 
There you go. But here's the good Come news. On. We have a comic of the week, you guys. You want to do comic right. of the week? Yes. Yeah, let's do comic of the week. <laughs> I thought we did this gal like years ago. Go her ahead, name's Jackie. Kelly. Her name's Kelly. McInerney. Did you forget her last name? I couldn't. I, I didn't know how to pronounce it. L L Y M C I N E R N E Y. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So Kelly McInerney, who used to be sort of like what? What was what was her old Instagram handle? I'll yes. Her yeah. I feel like we've done her before, <laughs> yeah. but clearly. Yeah, she's hilarious, and Holly Weirdo could not be a less helpful uh, handle, <laughs> uh, aside from any Lori 16. Um, right. If, if, <laughs> I can't believe there's a, there's not many of us, but there's enough of us who didn't think this would help our careers that uh, <laughs> we really have hampered ourselves. Book her a bunch. And I, I commend her for going, fuck it, I'm not committing to this, and go, coming back with her name. Good for her. Good for Kelly. Wow. McInerney. Yeah. yeah. McInerney. Mm -hmm. She's great. The what the last reel I watched of hers, uh, just to remind me of who she was. Because I remember people buy their material. I'm sorry, Dragon Riders of Pern over here. I'm like Falar. Anyway, that's a that's I don't know. character. Okay. Well, you why don't you reference some zombie fucking shit? Here's the scoop. Um, <laughs> Kelly McInerney did a great joke about her grandma being a leprechaun. And that was uh, that's good that's good stuff, you guys. That's comedy gold. So Find her, follow her, give her, hand her a 20. Tell her that we sent you. Sure. Um, yeah, all of that. Um, oh, Jackie, I am turning into uh, the person you call when your uh, preferred headliner canceled. Because, all right, I got, mm -hmm. I picked up Maria's uh, yeah, you did. gig at Cap City a couple <laughs> weekends ago. Right. And uh, now... Uh, John Doerr had to cancel his week at the San Francisco Punchline, and I am there the 24th, April 24th through the 27th. My Bay Area friends, I have not much time to promote this gig. Please come out. Uh, uh, there's a lot of new material, and there's old stuff I'm trying to dump as quickly as possible, but I'm trying to give it some new life before I dump it. But so yeah, go come and on see out. it before it, before it gets retired. See it now live. Before, yes, these are live shows. Me, you, I'm willing to drop material at any second to talk to the audience, but I also do not film you. It's a private event, as far as I'm concerned. Keep the cameras on this face, but right. they will be fun shows. I guarantee they will be fun shows because I'm a fun comedian. God damn it. So come to the shows uh, Wednesday through Saturday at the San Francisco Punchline, right off the Embarcadero Station uh, for Bay Area Rapid Transit, AKA BART. Well, congratulations on that. That uh, that Thank is cool. You. That is awesome. That um, that you that you're picking up stuff like that. Um, my agent. Well, told yeah. Me that I mean, he, I'd, I'd he, like to yeah, have shit booked out in advance, but yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's a little terrifying to go into April with no work and then all of a sudden have like work. I mean, it's great, yeah. but it's like the panic, the unnecessary panic I went through in say February, going what? There's fucking nothing happening here. You know, you have I to have you, spared myself. God there. is your employer, Lori. I don't think you understand. <laughs> <laughs> I call him Allah, Jackie, and uh, you can he needs call to give him me a, more work. Exactly, you can call him a bottle of water. I don't give a damn. It's uh, what I have to do is I have to trust in the universe, right? I have to trust that there's going to be work because my <sighs> agent told me because I sent him a list of cities. I was like, I don't want you to get yelled at. If I book some weirdo, like hundred seat winery, and because the club won't book me, so tell me if you have any irons in the fire. And he wrote me back and he said, "I'm sorry, Jackie, I have no irons in the fire for you." Shit. So I booked Jackie. It's fucking hard out here. I booked a one nighter in Pittsburgh. I booked a one nighter in Portland. Um. I'm just going to try to pick up some work, man. I am doing a weird run <laughs> in northern Minnesota. This reminds me of the 90s, you guys, when I lived in Minneapolis. I'm doing Hayward, I know. Minnesota. I swear to God, we're going back to Eau Claire. Yes. 
and then um, yeah. Madison, and then I've got three or four days off in between it all, where I'm going to just drive around uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota visiting my family, I guess, and cl- crashing on couches like I'm in my 20s. But uh, there you go. Well, um, way to way to brag that you have places to stay in Minnesota and Wisconsin, Jackie. Some of us don't sure. have multiple siblings housed all over the Midwest waiting for right. us to sleep on Mary Mack will totally let you stay at her house in uh, in <laughs> Minneapolis. So Doesn't she live like in the woods or some something like cool something She's she's helping uh, with her mom right now out in the woods uh but I think that they are building some sort of crazy like they I believe there to be cabins. <laughs> I believe there to be some sort of woods you know, buildings in the woods. I love it. There there's like um for comics there there is a time where you will be called to help with your aging parents and it yeah. will shock you oh you yeah know? look at rontowski yeah look at look at uh, kira well, Sultanovich. look at all of us i know i know it's like you will will have had this incredible freedom for x amount of years do what you want go to any clubs do one-nighters and all that and then you are you are changing the diapers of an elderly person, not a baby who is your future, but a, of an elderly person who is the past. And uh, that's, I don't know, you, you did list only female comics. I'm not saying the men don't do it, but <laughs> um, I guess the exa- uh, most of the examples I know are female comics going home or helping yeah. out. You know yeah, what I mean? mean the I don't know. Sisters or, yeah. So. Right. Anyway, it's uh, it's it's a shocker. Um, it is. So tonight is Wednesday when this goes up, and right. I will be in Minneapolis right. at the Pantages Theater with Maria Bamford. Um, oh, neat! Because she's been ill for the last couple of weeks, but I believe it's all going to work out, and she's going to be at the Pantages tomorrow. I'm in Columbus right now. Tonight I'm opening for Brian Regan, but <clears throat> tomorrow with Maria, and then the next night. Um, with Maria again, but outside of Pittsburgh in a place called Munhall, Pennsylvania. And she actually asked me to open for her in Portland um, at the Helium. And so, um, yeah, I don't cool, know. Cool. Yeah. What, no? So, when? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's coming up uh, June, maybe. I'm um, I'm at Helium uh, for one night in June because I'm up in Portland uh, at Livewire doing Livewire. So uh, okay. I'm doing Helium the next night. It's either June fifth or June sixth. But um, to our Portland fan base, you could help both of us out if you come to our shows in Portland. I mean, you'll have a good time. You're not doing charity work. You'll have a good time. I promise. <laughs> but also, right? Uh, uh, the well, more you we know, can I can fill rooms. The more we can work and uh, keep doing this including yeah, dumb so podcast. the San Francisco it's in July because the San Francisco uh, is I'm doing Portland by myself um, because I'm doing San Francisco. She gave me a midweek. So mm-hmm. I'm doing 16, 17, 18 in July. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm going to, well, I'm going to quote Lori Kilmartin fucking fill that room for me so that uh, the San Francisco yeah. punchline will have me back on a weekend. And also right, right, right. I get a bump if I sell out the room. So if you guys yeah. um, could uh, just fly family. Come out. Bring your friends. friends. Just make yeah. it make it. I so. mean, if you're listening, you are part of our audience, right? And so right, but they may not live in San Francisco. Town, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Show up. Like, be part of it. Come tell us that you will. We'll give you free stickers if you tell us you listen to the podcast. Like, come out. That's That's part of your job as the audience is to participate in the live shows. Right, yeah. so that's July 16, 17, and 18. That's uh, Lori's, Lori's birthday, July 16th. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 17th, my friend Stefan's birthday. Uh, and then the 18th. It's, uh, and then the 19th, I'm, I'll be, because I just am like, I got to fill something here. And mm-hmm. um, Punchline has some sort of 90-day, 90 90-mile 90 uh, yeah. thing where I can't. <laughs> Radius, yeah. Right, so I'm going to Portland on July 19th to do the siren mm-hmm. just one night. Oh, cool. I think, is it mm-hmm. live wire on a Friday it's, or is oh, live wire on a, a Saturday? Wednesday or a Thursday. No, oh, is it? it's either a okay. Wednesday or a Thursday. Yeah. I always thought it was a weekend night. 
And then, um, so that Friday, I'm going to be in uh, July 19th. I'm going to be in Portland, Oregon. I'm trying to find something on the 20th. I'd love to do like Spokane, even that Coeur d'Alene, which is just some sort of Nazi stronghold in uh, Idaho. It's within uh, it's within shouting distance of some friends of mine who live in Spokane. So, um, yeah, and even to, Nazi yeah. strongholds have people who are not Nazis who are dying for somebody I'm normal only, and nice to come to town want, and entertain. Exactly. I want to perform for the French resistance in Coeur d'Alene, please. <laughs> and, uh, exactly. <laughs> Bring your little berets and come on out, guys. I got pins. I got pins. And uh, <laughs> uh, remember I had those enamel French resistance pins made? No? Yes. I, oh, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Did you? I gave you one. Yeah, I did. Wow. Because they were at the French Resistance Museum and they didn't have pin. They didn't have replicas in the. You in gave the, me one? I think I did. I think I gave you an enamel pin because I, uh, my nephew was like, you should sell them. And I was like, I should sell replica French Resistance <laughs> pins for profit. And he's like, well, you could sell them at cost. And uh, I was like, stop talking. And uh, it's uh, the apple does not fall that far from the tree, my little Cations. Uh, it, it fell far from the tree if he's if your nephew is asking you to do something and not get paid for it. It fell very far from the tree. That is not something your dad oh, no. would. He, ever, he was course uh, correcting. Recommend. He was literally course correcting. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh. yeah. So this this week I come back. I'm doing a bunch of. I'm home for the next two weeks before I go to Seattle. You should totally come and uh -huh. see me in Seattle too. By the way, I'm at Laughs in Seattle, May third and fourth, and. Um, but I'm doing a lot of like I'm think I'm doing Largo with Fred Armisen. I'm doing Dynasty with um, with uh, uh, Dana Gould. I'm uh, I'm thinking about why why don't I ask Dynasty or Largo if I can do a show? These are the, these are all the every time I'm there, I think the box. same thing. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. And then like um, who, yeah. when comics of our level or lower, you know, like in maybe time in the business or whatever, are doing these a night with. Like, are they pitching it or is Largo coming to them? Yeah. You know? Yeah, or I don't know. Is, is it looking at their social media and going, this person can fill it? Or is it, I, I don't know what the process is. I mean, I feel like we just kind of got, <laughs> this feels like this all the time. Skipped. Yeah. <laughs> just skipped. Yeah. Just, oh, we'll get to the next generation. Well, we're still here. <laughs> whatever but that's that's right. also like a, almost a gen x thing too there's another post about social security and they listed all the generations that would need social security and they completely skipped gen x so, oh what is, Wait, is they it don't think we're gonna need it with our generation or just our level <laughs> Wait, of comments I, but, I don't know. but but we've been put paying in and so that's the thing about social security that always cracks me up they're gonna take away social security i was like oh really could I have my several hundred thousand dollars back then? Because I had a yeah, day job I'd until like 20, back then. 2003. Thank you. Exactly. I, I, I paid it every time I got paid. We still pay into it, Jackie. Yeah. We don't we pay totally as much pay in, in because we're independent right. contractors. We pay in. Um, uh, no, you know, um, Leanne Morgan, you know, Karen and Leanne Morgan who are unrelated, but they're both have had like a huge boost. They're both like okay. pretty clean comics and stuff and Southern. Nice. Um, but, uh, Oh, my mother-in-law like, watched that. She watched both of yeah. those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She got like, them mixed I, up. I, and I was like, yeah, me too. Go ahead. Like, I, I, they're very, they're inspirational. Uh, even though, like, I'm like, oh, I'm not clean like that. I can't have what they have because I'm not clean. And I'm just, I'm a dirty soul, right? <laughs> but they found, they found their audience, right? I love it. And Leanne Morgan is, I just saw this on Instagram, has, she, she was a, um, a, uh, I think she was an Avon or a Mary Kay, like, uh, makeup sales lady, right? Now she has a makeup line, because all these fucking male comics are doing, um, doing booze lines. Oh, right, that's why whiskey. Gaffigan yeah. has a bourbon. That's why he's, he's sending he us. Oh, that's why he was and talking about. a lot about of male comics. Yeah, they've got vodka, they, whatever. And uh, Leanne's doing makeup. And I'm like, good for her. You know, that's cool. Yeah, um, can I put out I, a... I don't a, expect a, to ever have either of their levels of success because of my, how, whatever dark or filthy I am. But, you know, it's out, something's out there. We just have to find our audience. People who would love us don't know we're alive. And if they did, they would come to see our shows and we would be happy. 
Right. And we do, I mean, the people who do love us come and see us and, and that's great. And mm-hmm. you, what you're yeah. saying is that there's uh, 11 million other people. Who yes, are just there's more. more. And they right. haven't found us yet. Right. And somehow we have to get ourselves in front will. of them. They will. It'll be fun. And, Maybe. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, but I'm psyched about, I'm psyched about all the, the LA sets I have coming up quite honestly, just because I picked up, like I did a set the other night at the improv and, yeah. um, I followed, it was, uh, Hunter was, uh, Hunter, I forget his last name. Hunter Hill. Yep. And he was hosting. Yeah. Eliza went mm-hmm. up first. Eliza mm-hmm. did, um, she's great. The thing is, is, is as she's matured, like, cause she's always loved stand up so much. It's always great to watch, you know, one of the younger comics sort of come into their, their own. And, you know, and she knows this is that, um, she's so certain of herself that it's, it, that she irritated me for a, for a little while, but, um, <laughs> because that sort of, I'm, I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> I was, I'm too much a Minneapolis comic where I'm like, no, no, you tell me I'm good. No, no, shut up. Just tell them you're great, Jackie. Just be, be the genius you are and own it. And then they'll agree. So, um, but I really, her set was so funny because it was this, it's this stuff about, she, it, she has a very funny bit. And then, but it, uh, she closed it on this thing about the patriarchy that I thought, mm-hmm. I thought about offering her a tag and I thought, well, I don't want people to offer me a tag. So, uh, and, and she, Why not? she well, yeah, I know. Uh, so, she well, bolted. Yeah. Yeah. She bolted anyway. So, but it was, it was, mm. it was a, it was a, I thought that the patriarchy, you know, it was clearly a new bit. It was great. But, um, mm-hmm. and I actually, it, was it clear that it was a new bit? I don't know. I I might be talking out of my ass, you guys. Tell Eliza I like her. Anyway, so um, but the um, and then so M- Master Brawny went up, and then I went up. Who and me? Okay. Uh, you oh, know Miles. Miles. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you know Miles. Yeah, yeah, Master yeah, yeah. Brawny. Yeah, and uh, mm-hmm. he didn't even. I just I got up oh, and oh, he oh. had referenced her set, so I got. You know how sometimes you reference a person's set before you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I just got up and I said, and happy Ramadan. And so, um, <laughs> to both of you, uh, mm-hmm. Maz and whoever's in the audience, not talking about how they're in Ramadan and, uh, they're Muslim, but, uh, cause he couldn't get, he couldn't get anyone to admit that they were Muslim in the audience, but he was like, there has to be someone here. And then, and then I did, I did good, but I, uh, this guy wasn't there and I have a bit that I'm working on him about, and I don't know if you want me to mention him. So I'm going to type his name in the, okay. In, in the chat. So yeah. So, so you're he, working on a bit about him. Yeah. Well, I just, I reference him occasionally in the bit. Cause it's literally, it's about, <laughs> it's about old dudes sleeping with 15 year old girls and, and, and okay. statutory rape. And I mean, it's not, it's right. Even if her dad says it's okay. It's not okay. Yeah. That's the premise. Jackie, of the well, welcome to <laughs> USA swimming in the nineties and the eighties. Go ahead. But exactly. Um, Except yeah. for your dad did it's, not say it was okay. No, <laughs> at didn't. all. Not yes. at all. And he was that like, didn't happen to me. It happened to friends of mine, but yeah, oh, it was, yeah, it's gross. it was uh, anyway. quite prevalent. Anyway. Yeah. It's not, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not all right. All 15 year olds should touch other 15 year olds and it should be a lot of, you know, can I, yeah. can I, can I, is that okay? Is that okay? And because that's, because that. that's where consensual uh, sex is at right now. It doesn't seem hot to yes. me though. It does seem mm-hmm. very respectful and nice. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so I did not do the bit. I would have done the bit. I like to think if he would have been in the room, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to do the bit if he wasn't in the room and I didn't want to do the bit. Um, and I might have done the bit if he wasn't on the show. Okay. Because I think that there's uh, there's like an ethical thing for me where I'm like, I have to do the bit if he's in the room and could get really mad and charge the stage. Uh, <laughs> but 
<laughs> or have some sort now of we're rebuttal. talking now this is or, the comedy show i want to see well or <laughs> right? i mean right right, right the, like if if ck were in the room Mm -hmm. I would like to think, and on the show, I would like to think that I would talk about it, about him blocking a doorway and not asking, you know, is this all right? Yeah. You guys, do you like this? Because I do. And I would like to show you uh, how big it gets. And then, um, well, I assume, right? It does grow. Um, I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. I just know you're a a troublemaker. I let's take a break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Are we back? Because Jackie, back. I did a classic dumb thing. It turned out okay. So a booker uh, in town, I looked at my text and the last mm. spot I got from them was in June of 2023. I was offered a spot in November and I couldn't do it. So I took a screenshot of that and I meant to send it to the ladies chat with oh. the thing i guess that i guess my next spot will be in may sarcastically instead mm-hmm. i sent it to the booker oh shit! and then <laughs> i said oops sorry that w- i was just complaining to a comic friend of mine <laughs> i guess i'll never work for you again but i hardly do anyway so it's no big deal and then uh that booker was <laughs> did you write <laughs> all of that something like that something okay. like that Okay. Uh, and then the booker was like, uh, we ended up, you know, it wasn't, it, it was the level of complaint wasn't so vit- vitriolic Good. that I couldn't, you know, play it yeah, off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, I mean, it also was hard evidence <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I mean, you can't refute it. And then they, you know, they were like, I'm so, you know, we'll get you, but it was all, you know, it was okay. Uh, but then again, okay. if I don't get another, I can't, I won't know because it, if I don't get a spot in for the next six, six months, it could be the same as if I'd never accidentally sent that text to the booker. We'll see. Right. I don't we'll know. See. So, so I, uh, had this big drama with the, with these people in the chat. I had with, with that, with that person in the chat. Okay. And uh, but this week I sent out avails to everyone because I need to fill the rest of my year because uh, there right, are no right, irons right. in the fire, Lori. And uh, so yeah, I have to put my that, own you irons. You don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. That doesn't feel good to hear. So uh, right, right. So I um, so I just pinged everybody, and um, and so um, yeah, uh, I have not heard back from that person. I set my avails essentially, like old timey. Well, I was just you, like, "Here's my that avails. person doesn't doesn't book that room." But they're just they, part they, they implied that they could. They implied that they wanted to know if I wanted to work that that city. So I oh, said, I "I'm see. I'm going to work the city. Can I please have work at your club?" And then yeah. I have not heard back from that person. So I'm going to work whatever I can in that city. Maybe I'll work all of the clubs in that city, except the club that I want to work. (laughs) I love. There's a certain amount of respectability. Like, there's so many more clubs. I I saw a lot of people are working a lot of new new clubs. I saw that. There's a lot of new rooms. There's a ton of new. I mean, comedy is is, uh, might be permanently popular in the United States now, which is good and bad. I love that. I guess it's permanently popular. Well, it seems it like it has always gone in waves. Um, and, uh, but now it just seems like, uh, because of social media, right. It's just, there's always going to be some comics that you can find that you like, it might not be, you know, right. like it, it, it seems new markets are being created, new audiences are being created. Let's put it that way. Sure. And new comics are being created for those audiences too. But I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, <sighs> It's still hard to get work because there's so many comedians, but right, right, um, still got to grind it out. So I, yeah, last weekend I did a, yeah, what I call a tiny grind. I did a tiny grind, Lori. <laughs> uh, I didn't, I didn't put enough effort into it, but I was busy. You know, I'm just we're trying to figure out Andy's mom, and um, yeah, there's so much work to the to the whole thing that I was like, I know. Well, you got to sit down and do your avails and figure out and old school send out avails and 
and and make this right. happen. And so um, I did some of it, and and I got some work. I got some work, and and some That's people cool. uh, I was ignored. So it's just like it was back when I did it initially. It turns out nothing right. has changed. I'll send out avails. Some people will book me, and some people will not, and other people will respond. Oh, text me again in September, which was what I got from yeah. one guy. And I was like, you're not wrong. I will text you in September. Um, yeah. Right? I just, there's some people, they obviously are not having any problems. They're turning down things. And it's like, I, I guess I thought at some point I'd be at that place. And to Where, always be panicking. I always think, that, I always think that Joan Rivers... Like the fact I that know, she was panicking she was, at 80. Is that insane. was a mental disorder because she was a multimillionaire at that point. That was we, from when she couldn't, literally couldn't get work after. You don't the think Tonight this Show is a mental disorder for the last 40 years? I think I've had a mental disorder for the last 40 years in stand up comedy. No, I don't because okay. you and me and other people at our level, we don't, we don't have coasting money. Okay. We, uh, we, we were not going to, if we have two months without work, we're not going to go be homeless, but you start worrying. We don't have that chunk of, of money right. where you're like, I have, well, like I'm I, very it, lucky it, it, in the it fact can that go I away have, and I'll be okay. Right. I have prudent reserve, but my prudent reserve right. is, is dodgy right now. It's well, it's just lowering, but I always think to myself, yeah. if I had to get a job at home Depot, I could. And, um, <laughs> Which is a weird thing to think of, but it is. I mean, Why Home Depot. <laughs> You're not like wrong. I, always think I actually am not qualified to, me, to work at Home Depot, though I am because you I can't know. find anyone to help you at Home Depot. So I'd be completely <laughs> qualified that. for that. <laughs> um, I'm always my back. I, you know, I've always thought, well, Costco or Trader Joe's or something, but then. Then I read about uh, writers who are trying to get work in those places and can't get work because they always assume that you're going to quit as soon as you get a writing job. So we, you know, we think we're eminently, we can do a lot of things. We comedians, you know, the fact that we book ourselves, travel, all that we can do. We, those are, those are difficult skills. skills to master to run your life, but it's hard to explain that to, you know, but it, oh, I, I think, oh, I could work for the post office. Right. I can fucking sort mail, you know, <laughs> Oh, I hear the, or whatever they maddening. do. You know, <laughs> I, uh, um, I wore a red shirt to target the other day. Yeah. Like literally <laughs> that old... see what it would feel like. <laughs> right. Pardon. Well, me. well, well, I know it. So many things are happening around me. My I'm, all I am, Mar uh, Maria, all I am, Lori, is, Lori. is, is a project. Uh, this day, I am literally, I'm like, someone has to find me a cup of coffee and a muffin and a task and a, and a, I've got to finish this book. And then Andy called me this morning. He's like, did you play Marvel Puzzle Quest? There's an event quest that's important this week. And I was like, no, no, I've yet to play Marvel Puzzle Quest this morning. I'm, no, I'll get on it. And, uh, and the thing is, I want to play Marvel Puzzle Quest. It's a match three. It's sort of a candy crush, but it's um, with Marvel superheroes. And there's, uh, mm -hmm. I have to stun people uh, 10 times and I have to get repeater tiles. Anyway, so there's things that have to happen in a video game on my phone because I'm letting people down in, in the guild, Lori. I don't want to let people down in the guild. There's at least two hours of Marvel Puzzle Quest that's needed out of me. Um, is, do you mean like a guild, like a union, or is this a guild within the game? In the game, in the game, it's it's a bunch of. Oh my uh, god, it's Jackie! My team. I just struck for eight months, and I don't want to hear about your fake guild in a play game. Okay, there's well, a real guild I wasn't, out there. You think I wasn't striking? I was striking. I got a t-shirt. Anyway, so do you ever wear your strike <laughs> t-shirt? You ever wear just wear your strike t-shirt uh, actually... around? We're supposed to wear them on Fridays in uh, solidarity with Iatsi, Iatsi, who uh, oh, yeah. might be striking. Okay. Oh, that's what someone told me. A lot of what the problem is with people not, you know, the business seeming still stuck is that they're anticipating an Iatsi strike and then yeah. everything is going to go yeah, down which is, again. Could we just is, fucking... Are the Teamsters in the Iatsi? Is that what? Because I was told it was uh, Teamsters. No, the Teamsters. 
uh, mm -hmm. will, will not cross IOTC lines. They won't cross. So that shuts everything down. Um, I went to a rally and uh, one of the Teamster guys was there and they were saying they would oh, participate in okay. that. So, yeah. Anyway, more, it's just, and, and all these, these studios end up, uh, um, you know, accepting most of the offers at the very end, but they just want to crush things before they do. Like they just want to crush workers and get as many people to give up and move away before they agree to the terms that they uh, are going to agree to anyway. Like it, it's, uh, it's maddening, you know, does anyone want to make shit out here anymore that has money? What are they I don't doing? Know. I was, I was talking to a, a comic friend of mine from England who was in town and she took a general and she said, you know what I don't like about a general is that I want, I want there to be two generals it and has. she's a British comic who gets to work. She writes, she performs, she has a sitcom. She has all these wow. things in England. And, um, but she came here and was hanging out and we, and we had coffee and it was lovely. But, um, mm -hmm. she was talking about how, um, the first general should be, she said she met with this woman and the woman had clearly not seen any of her work. And she's like, you know, oh my God. God, I have a show. She's like, okay. So the first general is, do you like what you see is, do you see any future in wanting to be working with this? And because the next time then I'll pitch you ideas, but you're going to have to watch my stuff that anything, my stand up. My sitcom. I mean, these executives, real, they have a job. Literally just <laughs> right. watch a little bit. Right. What the but fuck? She was like, I didn't even get a free salad. And uh, which, uh, you know, that's that's a key thing. So, like I once I once had a meeting with Olivia Munn, which uh, I oh. was not told that uh, she had a, a first look deal with CBS. So okay. I didn't know why we were meeting. And I never know anything anyway, because I'm just trying to do stand up comedy and then please put me to work in your other thing if you want me to do your other thing. Because I'm willing to do your right. other thing. I just don't know enough. I'm only thinking about stand up, sadly. And uh, right. I wish I had the bandwidth to think about other things. And because uh, I want to do I everything, I would also right. like to learn how to windsurf. Have you ever wanted to? Okay. It's been an hour, Lori, I think. Has it? Yeah. 